in the beginning, there was the railway club. Mm-hmm. Um, it was pretty smelly. You didn't really want to see it during the daytime. Overcrowded, L-shaped. Watched Dick Gawkin playing there, and there was a fight at the bar, and it didn't really disturb it, so it was quite a well-designed bar. Certainly at that point, it was quite hard for young bands to find somewhere to play, um, particularly if they were wanting to do their own original stuff. We certainly played all our best gigs there, I think. Mm. Pretty much, yeah. I think we played all our gigs there. Yeah. <laughs> because it had a really good mix of up-and-coming bands from around the country would, would stop off on a tour. And also for young bands, they got support slots. There were nights that sort of hosted, um, were hosted specifically for, you know, three local bands or something. And in the end, it became a sort of, almost a kind of extended home for people who were into music, both people in bands and audiences, people who were into their music. A great wee venue when we lost the railway club. Yep. I think immediately after the railway club closed, yeah, it certainly did suffer. There was um, everybody, the, the music scene in Inverness kind of retreated back to, to the market bar like a kind of a wounded animal. We lost the venue, then everyone went to a kind of underground sort of pub scene, which kind of helped nurture the, the cover bands instead of the creative bands. I think Inverness. Um, is a difficult place anyway because it's sort of the end of the line for tours and a lot of bands don't actually even bother even now putting us on on that. I don't think it helped not having anywhere but I think musicians will find places to play whatever happens but certainly not having an anywhere for in Inverness for bigger bands to come up didn't help local bands so to say linking a band with, with um, sort of more professional, bigger bands, it, it can only do them good, you know. If you, if you imagine like going down to, to Glasgow and that, you'll have more exposure because you can get a support slot with a bigger band, but you can't really do that up here, so you've got to do it up on, on, your, own, on your own steam. When the younger bands get uh, a chance to support them, they see them doing their work, they see how the business works at first hand, and they get to share the same stage. Within the limitations of Inverness, I think right now, musically and culturally, there's been a takeoff over the last five years. And when you look at Church Street, you know, there are six mu live music venues from the top to the end. Um, other venues have sprung up. Hootenannies has come along with the Rigmore Motel. Um, and it's gradually built up to the Ironworks opening uh, recently, which has given us a full suite of, of, of venues of different sizes to, to play in there. And it's gradually brought the scene back to Inverness. Hello, welcome to the afternoon. Ah, uh, that's costing me a fortune. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I've been there quite a few times. I'm going again tonight. We got treated like that you know, as soon as we walked in the door there, the moment we left, didn't we? It was the sound on stage is so good, it just doesn't, it almost feels like you're not doing a gig, it's absolutely wonderful. Just, uh, it would be nice to be able to play to more people. Well you see, look, the problem with Inverness, it's called a city, it's a wee town, 60,000 people. We can't call it a culture unless we do have a connection between us. If we're all working against each other, then uh, I believe that, you know, it'll split our audience and everyone suffers. Thank you.